XShape on the 3D Experience platform allows you to carry out subdivision modeling, which is more of a push-pull type uh, freestyle modeling as opposed to parametric where you fully have to define every sketch. Now you can get a little bit of the best of both worlds by defining reference sketches in a subdivision model and aligning the geometry to that reference sketch. So we're currently in XShape on the 3D Experience platform. This is entirely in a browser. You could do this even on a tablet. But what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start out by entering in a primitive. And we can start out with a cylinder for this example. And we'll go ahead and throw this on the origin and we'll leave this all as defaults. Now, in this case, uh, what we can do is set up a, a reference geom reference point, reference sketch for this geometry. Let's say that we wanted to have this loop here defined to uh, align to some certain sort of dimension. So what we can do here is come into our features tab and insert a reference plane for that sketch. And we can go ahead and choose this. Uh, don't want that there. Let's select that. And we'll go ahead and offset this by say, 2.5 and then we can go ahead and select OK and then we'll go ahead and select this to insert a sketch and we'll use our S key to get our shortcuts and select the circle sketch and we'll go ahead and enter that in at 5 inches. Now if I was to double click this to go back and to edit the subdivision we see that that disappears. Now that's because that the sketch is further down in the feature tree. It has to roll back up into the features to edit the subdivision surface. So what we can do is take use of ordered geometrical sets, single left click on the 3D shape here. We have the option to insert an ordered geometrical set. And this will allow us to take, I'll go ahead and shift select the plane in the sketch and we can drag it down on the feature tree here. Now this is disconnected from the actual subdivision surface. So if I go in here and double click on this now, you'll see that I have the edit capabilities of this surface, but the sketch stays here. So in this example, I'll go ahead and double click this uh, to get that loop selected and crease the edge. And you can see that blue edge comes in here because it's a creased edge now. And I'll go ahead and double select it again. And while holding control, I'll go ahead and select that sketch. And now we have the option to align to curve. And we can see if we go ahead and select that, it expands that out to align it to that curve. Now, if you're getting some type of twisted geometry, you do have an option here, flip profile orientation. Um, so if you have something like that come in and it doesn't look quite right, try selecting that button to see if it cleans it up for you. And I'll go ahead and select the green check mark here. And you can see that that uh, is now the geometry that, uh, that we have uh, available. Now you can see that there's also a gap here between the surface and the sketch. And the reason be being is that it's actually the cage so if you're familiar uh, with any subdivision modeling techniques, behind the scenes, there's actually a cage in which is being modeled, and then the surface is all um, extracted from that cage, essentially, and, and made into nice C2 surface continuity uh, type geometry. So if we drop this uh, visibility drop down here, we can show cage and surface, and we can see actually what's being modeled in the background, and then the surface is being extracted from that. And we can see that the cage is actually what is aligned to that sketch. So when you're using align to curve, it's actually the cage being aligned to the sketch, not the surface. So we'll go ahead and just to dive in further, let's go ahead and throw in another example in which it's not just an uh, exact same plane or anything. It's actually moving this top surface off at an angle. So I'll jump back into this reference geometry order geometrical set, and I'm going to go ahead and create another reference plane. So we'll just go ahead and choose this bottom plane again here. And we'll also choose another plane to get an angled plane. And then let's just go ahead and offset this really quick and dirty example here. Nothing, nothing too fancy here, uh, just to get the point across. So I'll go ahead and expand this out just for my view. And we'll go ahead and select this, create a sketch on this, and go ahead and insert another circle. And let's say that this is at 4.5. And ultimately, you could fully define that sketch. Uh, I'm just getting in here for a nice, quick, and dirty example. Now, you see, I, I didn't, I must not have uh, selected that geometrical set correctly, and their features are up here. Again, you can just go ahead, select those, and drag them down to add them to that other uh, OGS. So I'm actually going to go ahead and hide this plane, and we're going to go and double click on this subdivision surface to jump into edit mode, double click on that top loop, crease, and you see it's a nice sharp edge now. And we'll go ahead and double click it again, control select, align to curve. Now you can see it doesn't um, 
only work if it's on the same plane. So it aligned all those points up, brought that up at the correct angle. And again, if you're seeing some type of weird uh, twisted geometry, intersecting mesh, anything like that, make sure to check this option first. And then sometimes if that doesn't work, both of the orientations are not quite correct. Uh, go ahead and select cancel and just try again and see if the program selects a different logic in order of which the vertices on this loop here connect to this curve. Uh, so sometimes that can make a difference. So we'll go ahead and align that once more. And just one last thing that I wanted to point out here, I'm actually going to show this plane again for this command. So let me actually go back and show this. This is only aligning the curve. So there's a number of strategies you could use, uh, but in this case, we line the curve, but we have that point there still uh, in the background. So if I go ahead and just confirm this, I can go ahead and select that middle point, select the plane, make sure that that's on the plane. And then we can go ahead and select that point here and use this webbing to make sure we stay on plane and, and organize that in a, in a fashion that we'd need. Uh, and that'll get you, there's, there's a multitude of ways, but essentially, this is how you can get through and use that align to curve option to get any type of shape you're looking for based off of reference sketches.